Hi, my name is Keith Cooper of North Light Images and in this short video I'm going to look at the very first things you should do with a new photo printer when you've unpacked it, set it up, installed it. Now this particular one happens to be an Epson XP 15000. It could be any of the printers I've looked at and I've reviewed a lot of printers over time. Have a look at some of my YouTube videos and also particularly the articles and reviews on the North Light Images website because there's a lot more detail in those. So if you're looking after the, for details of a specific printer, then have a look there. But this is a generalization about any printer. And this goes for whether I'm setting up a printer, a small one like this, or a large format printer that would completely fill this space here for printing, say, 24 inch width roll paper or something like that. And these steps are what I always do. Um, first of all, the temptation is to just dive straight in and start printing some photos. Um, perfectly reasonable. Uh, you've got a great new photo printer. Why not? Well, you really want to check that your print setup is working, first of all. And the way to do that, and I've um, got videos and articles about these in detail, is to use test images. Now, there are a whole load of test images and information on using them on the North Light Images website. They're free to download for non-commercial use. This particular one is one I've used for years. It's uh, uh, Data Color have given me permission to post it uh, some time ago. They've got a, you'll get a version of this if you get one of their monitor calibrators or products, or similarly with X-Rite, you'll get stuff, you'll get test images you can use. But the whole point is to have a known good test image. And in this instance, it doesn't matter what it looks like here on the screen. We don't do anything to it. You print it straight. So you don't alter the brightness, you don't tweak the color, you don't do anything. You print it exactly as you intend to print your photos. Now, this one here, uh, without looking at what's written on the back, I can't even tell you exactly which printer it was done on. Modern printers are very similar. If you can't produce a great looking print from a printer like this or a larger one, then it's your fault. Um, it's not the printer's fault. Um, almost always, it is not the printer's fault. If it's the printer's fault, it will be obviously broken or something was wrong or something like that. But most of the time, the problems people get, I can firmly say it's nothing to do with the printer or the paper or the ink, uh, unless of course perhaps you're using sort of cheap third party inks there, all bets are off in that instance, but, but whatever. I've start, I print this, doesn't matter any settings, no editing, no that, but print it as you intend to print your photos. So if you're going to use a particular piece of software for printing your photos, print it from that. Out comes your test print. That's a color one. Um, I've also got a test print for, specifically for black and white. Now this is a bit more specialized. There are loads of articles about the different versions of this and how to use it on the North Light site. So I won't go into the details here, but suffice to say, this has been specially made for printing black and white. And if black and white is important to you, then setting up things is a good idea. Incidentally, there is a black and white section on this test image here you can use to get an idea of black and white performance. But what I would say is if your printer has a specialist black and white print mode in the printer driver, use that for black and white printing. It's almost always better than using the color print mode. Um, that's based on testing hundreds of papers, a whole pile of printers, and I've not come across an instance where the color printing version produced a better black and white than the black and white print mode that you get on things. So, you've got your printer, what to print it on, what paper to print it on. Start with basic printers, basic papers. Um, now, I would say it depends on your taste of what you want to print, but start with, say, for, let's say we're just doing colour prints here. Start with a basic luster paper or a gloss paper if you like glossy prints. And if you're interested, maybe a basic matte or art paper, but use papers produced by the paper manufacturer. So in this instance, it's an Epson printer, so use some Epson paper. That's not because their papers are better in any way. 
the same people probably make the papers for that you see with other names on them. There are only a limited number of actual paper makers, but there are a lot more labels to go on boxes of papers. So start with a manufacturer's paper. And the reason I say that is because they come with printer profiles. And the printer, there's every chance that the printer was tested during its development using those very papers. So we print a known test image. We don't tweak it. We don't adjust it or anything because it is correct. We print it using a basic paper, using the same print settings that you're going to use. Then have a look at the test images. Uh, there are details. Uh, in the information with this particular image about what to look for in each of these little panels. Uh, they all show different aspects. So this particular one, um, there's some bright colours here which are a good test. Obviously the black and white. Uh, you've got skin tones, you've got deep shadow detail. Um, this can be quite a brutal picture to print. Um, there are all kinds of bits in this which are trying to produce problems. Why print this and not one of your own photos? Well, one of your own photos, you have usually some form of emotional attachment to it. You've only ever seen it on the screen, so you have a vision of what you think it looks like. You have a memory of what perhaps the picture looked like when you took it, and that is highly unreliable. Uh, so you've got this, which you don't know. So use the image itself, a special test image. Um, all of this has no effect on this. This is purely a test of, is your print set up from taking a file and printing it working okay? Um, it's a bit tedious. You don't have to do it, uh, do loads and loads of prints. But the idea is, look at a few basic papers, check whether your printer is working. Now, um, I'll be doing another video on like the next steps and what are the key bits to take you know, to do good prints. But this is just the basics. This is the stuff that you really need to do. It's the stuff I do every time I get a new printer to test. Um, I have boxes full of prints of this image and the black and white image that I've done. And um, I keep them so I can look back and see the basic difference between printers. One other thing is don't get too hung up on detail. Um, I, my eyesight is such my close-up eyesight that I need reading glasses. Now, with this, I can now read text. I can check detail quite well. I get a basic magnifying glass. Yeah, that's about as far as I want to go in print analysis. If you find your temptation is to get something like this out, a hand lens, uh, this is my old hand lens from back when I, was, when I was a geologist, and start looking at fine detail, take that as a hint that you're overdoing it. A good picture should be visible and as a good picture, even at the resolution you see on this, uh, on this video. Um, once you start getting hand lens out, you are in danger of getting lost in the detail. Don't go there. I'll cover this on, in some other uh, videos as well. But suffice to say, um, I can tell even without my glasses on whether this test print is fine. So there you go. Now, please, uh, if you found this useful, please do subscribe. Feel free to ask questions on the channel as well. Um, they often give me ideas for new videos and check out the North Light Images website. Hopefully this is useful and uh, with the next step I'll look at uh, monitor profiling and uh, uh, checking your prints. So thank you very much.